All right, so first, uh, can you spell your last name? For sure, it's B as in boy, Y-L-E-R. Okay, and your title? We haven't really gotten around to that yet, actually. So I understand you're with a national organization. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about what are the specific things that you want in government? Okay. Um, I think when we began, I think it's true that there was a response to the uh, narrative that the Tea Party represents America and that they're the only ones that are really concerned about our democratic process and are likely to vote, for instance. Um, but actually, as people have sort of flooded through this little uh, hole in that veneer and formed a community, both online and now in, in person, we found that it's not so much that we want to respond to anyone else's way of engaging in the political process, but we want to forge a new one and in some ways hopefully rebuild the capacity that we have to be civil when we talk about politics and to be solutions oriented and uh, reality based. I think we've really gotten away from those things and it's really hurting our democracy right now. And are you from Washington or are you from this area? I am from uh, in between, Prince William County, Virginia, on the way. It's on the 29 from Washington. Yeah. And so what kind of brought you to this Greenberries here in Charlottesville? Well, I have a lot of friends and family in the area. And because uh, our strength really is in the Prince William County uh, my, I mean, my county is really one of the hubs of the national organization, and so there are two people there who are much better at organizing than I am, so I would have been useless today up there, so I decided to come down here. Right. And, you know, why coffee? I know we've talked about this, but coffee, mm -hmm. coffee houses have kind of, have had like sort of an elitist connotation Oh, before. sure. Uh -huh. Do you consider that to be true, or? Um, the reason why we chose coffee is obviously that this tr tremendous, uh, spotlight had been built for the Tea Party. Um, and so it's hard for us with our YouTube videos and uh, Facebook posts to compete with something that's being funded by these giant media conglomerates. So we just sort of decided to name ourselves something that would sort of edge our way into that spotlight and see if we could be a part of the conversation. Right. So kind of describe what's going to be happening today. Well, um, the two local facilitators, uh, actually there's four, um, but the, the two who will be taking the lead today, they're going to ask people to introduce themselves. They're going to ask people to uh, nominate other cafes around Charlottesville where they can start their own chapters. Uh, we're going to ask people to create these posters for what we call our Issues Mosaic. We're going to have a collage in the shape of the state of Virginia that shows people holding up signs that say coffee and the issue or issues that are most important to them as Americans. Do you get a sense of what those issues are going to be yet? Well, yes, because I've been driving around Virginia um, encouraging people to do this just as an experiment. And it's great because it only really takes them about five minutes to come to a consensus. And I think right now people are more focused on domestic issues that have to do with the economy and jobs. Of course, health care is really related to that in so many ways. Right. Do many people in the party feel disillusioned about how Obama is doing or they feel mm -hmm. uh, optimistic? I think that there are many people from all different political spectrums that have come into this uh, uh, organization and many of them, I think it's true, have s expressed disappointment that you know we all felt so good about our democracy in 2008. No matter what candidate you supported, everyone did so out of pride, out of civic pride and we felt really good about doing it. A, a war hero or the first African American president, we really felt like we were uniting as a people. And then in 2009 there was just a new narrative that was presented to us by these media media conglomerates that I think many of us felt in some ways it was like a tissue rejection. You know, they tried to graft on another America that we really can't get with. And so, you know, it is true that the president, you know, in some ways hasn't been the change that we hoped he would be, but I think it's also a lesson for us and I think it's a valuable one that we can't just expect one person to make the change that we want to see. It's, it's something that we all have to be involved in. And I think that's one of the main themes of the Coffee Party. It's about civic participation. And it's about bringing back that civic pride that we had in 2008 when everyone participated in record numbers. I think that's the way to fortify our democracy and protect us from the special interests and really fringe organizations having too much influence over the direction that our country takes. Yeah, just in terms of what you hope the outcome of all of these coffee conversations
Well, I hope we can set an example for our elected officials that we can have a conversation about political issues and not label each other socialists or racists and walk away from the table declaring one another enemies. I think that the, the, the media, I'm sorry to say, has sort of contributed to this idea of politics as sport, really as blood sport. And we're here as audience members forced to watch this steel cage death match and the, and the cage is locked and we can't get in and, and we're saying stop this, we don't want to see this. I mean, the, the, the wrestling outfits you're wearing are ugly. You're hitting each other with chairs that's ugly. We want another way of talking about politics. And so rather than, you know, I don't know, rattling that cage and screaming, we thought we'd just lead by example.